Hey everyone, thank you for joining me for another episode talking about Crimson 3.1. This is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Red Lion Controls. Our uh, last episode, the thing that we uh, had to go change is the fact that I had made space for a three digit number when the number could actually be four or five characters. And we can see now that uh, everything's fine now that we've updated the data tag format properties and we reduce the size of the font. Also, you'll see that we uh, have our set point functionality working as expected, where um, the lights turn on when we meet the set point and when we double that set point value. Okay, let's do some more with primitives and with arranging things on the screen. So we're going to go back over to Crimson 3.1 and let's look a little bit more at some of the fills available to us. I'm going to double click. I could also Alt Enter, right click and Properties. And we started with a solid color here, but you can actually fill this with whatever you'd like. So maybe I want a graduated fill and instead of white, um, I like to do often a blue to dark blue sort of thing. So maybe I make this middle one darker as well. Notice I'm going to pick and I can, you know, simply choose something darker this way. Also, if you have an RGB value specifically that you'd like to put in there, you can do that as well. I can change the background of this and I can change the edge of it. So uh, the other thing we can do is actually fill with colors. So maybe it's water that we want to put in here. So I can fill this now with water. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now if I zoom in a bit, we can see that it's filled with that water color. I don't know if you caught that, but down in the end here, we have skip corners. Let's say I want to skip the top right corner. As soon as I click that, notice this little point pops out. And now I've got a unique shape. So maybe for branding purposes or to you know innovate a little bit on your user interface, you want to customize the primitive shapes that you use. Crimson 3.1 makes that possible in an instant. Okay, let's also take a look at what we can do with the numbers here. So um, we talked about how in primitives you can actually put formulas directly on uh, the controls. We can do stuff with color with the text as well as it relates to values of data tags or statuses, that sort of thing. So I double clicked on our level tag area and instead of just a plain old white number, let's give it some meaning. Let's uh, have it so that when the value goes over the set point, um, it turns uh, yellow, you know, a warning of some kind. How do we do that? All right, we've got some various tabs across the top. Uh, format is where we would put the decimal points. Uh, in this case, it's defined by the tag. Um, colors is where we're going to change text color. Figure is if you wanted to put a background or something in this uh, area here. So let's work with colors for a moment. Right now, it's a fixed color white. I can actually change that to a two-state color. And now I need to tell it when uh, to display which color. So I want it to be when level is greater than or equal to set point. All right. And uh, when that's true, I want it to be yellow. Otherwise, white is just fine because that's what white is right now. So I'm going to click OK, click OK. And now we don't see anything change here, but if we want to test that format, remember how we um, simulated a value for the set point. Right now we're simulating a value of 50. So let's go ahead and simulate a value on level. I'm going to come to my data tags and I want to pick a value uh, greater than 50 so that I can see if it turns yellow in the way I want it to. So I'm going to press 
uh, 60 here in the data simulation area. Come back over to display pages. Nothing's changed, but that's because I haven't clicked on the screen yet. As soon as I do, we can see the light turned on and the value uh, also changed color. Let's send that down to our uh, HMI. All right, so as soon as it hits 30, we see that the number changed, the light turned on when it hits 60, the other light turns on. Let's do one more thing. Now that we know how to use primitives and create formulas in the primitives themselves, we don't really need this light on data tag anymore because I can just go into the green light and put a formula there. So I'm going to delete it and let's see what happens. I delete it and there is an error in the database. There are a few ways that we can look at errors in the database. I can click on this red thing here. I can step through them using F4. The instructions tell me right here. I can also hit F8 to get a list of all of the errors if there were multiple errors. So I'm going to click on this red thing and it takes me to where there's a problem. If I double click now, it shows me that was. We've seen this in previous episodes. I'm going to go ahead and general. This tag light on no longer appears. So let's write a formula here so that this green light knows when to turn on and that's when level is greater than or equal to set point. All right, we can check and see are there any more errors by hovering over the errors area. There aren't, if I send this on back down, we're gonna see that everything is working as expected. As soon as it hit the set point, it went to a green light. As soon as it hit 60, it went to a blue light. Look for more tips and tricks in our next episodes on Crimson 3.1.